What's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman, guys. It has been tough the last few days. I am not gonna lie. I've been really struggling to catch some fish. I've probably gone out like two or three times trying to film something for y'all and I have, have like one fish to show for it and like three failed videos. I've tried pond fishing, I've tried boat fishing, I've tried twin troller fishing, I've tried everything and it is just, it's just been tough. So today we are back at another pond. I'm hoping today is a different story. We can actually find some fish, get on a few bites. January is just one of those tough times of the year to catch fish. I'd say it's probably one of the toughest months of the year to catch fish, but it can also be one of the most rewarding this is one of the times of year you just catch monster bass when you do get some bites So I'm hoping we can go out here today find ourselves some nice chunky largemouth and see how it goes But today we're gonna be fishing a pond that I have fished a few times And it's one that I've had a ton of luck at the few times I have fished it Like I found some fish just stacked up, but that was in like totally different conditions I've never fished it in the cold so we're gonna have to see how this goes um, But you know fingers crossed we're gonna throw a variety of baits at them got everything rigged up and ready to go over here so hopefully i have everything that i need to have to get the job done but without further ado guys let's go ahead and hop out of the car grab the rods grab the gear and let's go find us some bass all right here are all the rods that we're gonna grab for today just gonna grab these and my camera and then we've got to grab our tackle out of the back Thankfully, I can park right next to the pond just in case I need to come back to the, the main tackle system here. But I believe this is everything we need for right now. So let's just go over here and get situated. I swear I always carry way too much with me when I'm pond hopping. I got like 20 things and trying to carry these cameras around it just adds to the chaos. But we're gonna get the job done. All right, here we go. I love me a good old bench to get posted up on and drop all my gear off at this looks like the spot you already know we're getting started with the blade bait my favorite moving bait for winter bass fishing like this and a blade bait will probably give them both a shot today if i'm not having much luck with this well let's go ahead and give this thing a fling and see how many leaves are on the bottom of this pond because this thing is a leaf magnet <laughs> hopefully it's not too bad but there are a ton of trees around here that have no leaves on them so i'm sure they're all in the pond You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Trying to kick that thing out of the way. Just messing up my cast and just snags my lure. I love that. Mother Nature's trying to break my spirits here, but I won't let that happen. We're catching some dang fish today. I am bound and determined. Let's get this back in here and fire that back out there. Got a bunch of leaves. We got like 20 feet of reeling until this thing gets snagged every time oh that's a snag that is a snagosaurus right there that is not good this is the only blade bait that we have ah that is so frustrating please come off please come off please come off please oh we are so lucky i can't tell you how happy i am right now i thought that was done for <laughs> Getting a lure back, I swear, is almost just as satisfying as catching a fish sometimes. <laughs> when you're like convinced that you're done for and it just happens to come right off, that's what it's all about, baby. <laughs> do need to straighten this hook out though, so let me use this bench really quick to do that. If you haven't tried speed cranking in the winter, guys, I highly recommend it. You know, it's definitely a way to try to trigger a bite when the going gets tough if you can just tap into that like primal instinct of these fish to to hunt down a bait or just swipe at something when it goes by their face just make them have a split second decision and don't really give them a chance to think about it sometimes it's the best way to to get some bites on certain days it's definitely worth you know having in your arsenal trying it every now and then and some days you'll just find a bite where they just hammer the dang thing just i'm literally talking reeling it just about as fast as you can and they will about take the rod out of your hand in 20 degree weather it's honestly crazy i think the key is just getting it right in front of their face if you can put it right in front of their face and that just kind of is luck of the draw when you're you're casting but that is what I believe is a ticket to get that reaction strike. There's 
one. There's a fish. Oh yeah. Feel like she got a little bit of size to her too, baby. Let's go. Got her on the speed crank. Now that is what I'm talking about. Come on in, darling. Come on in. Let's see what you got going on. You got a little size to you. You got a little size to you. This actually might be a good one, guys. This might be, you know, three, four pounds plus. I don't think she's any smaller than that. She might be. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell unless she's hooked weird. But she is fighting good. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a beaut. <laughs> it's a beauty. She's not as big as I thought. Oh, never mind. She's got a little chunk to her. It's probably about three pounds. Holy moly. Don't flop on me. Yeah. Oh, now that is what I'm talking about, guys. A nice, healthy LMB right there. Probably really close to that three pound range. Just a, just a healthy one. Just a big old winter chunk. If I do say so myself. You've been long awaited for, my friend. These last few days have been a struggle. Well, 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 would y'all take a look at that fish right there, guys? Just a beautiful fish, man. Oh, yes, that feels so good to finally get myself a nice large mouth. We're gonna go ahead and throw this one on the scale just to see what she weighs. I'm saying like a high two, maybe three pounds. Um, let me put her down for a second on the bench while I hop into my bag here really quick. She is alive and well, she's doing good. So we can take a second just to see what she weighs. Got that zeroed out and let's pop her on here. 3.17 pounds, a nice, healthy, fat, winter largemouth. Like I said, guys, the big ones bite when it gets cold. You know, I really do not catch many fish in that like two to one pound range. I feel like every fish I catch is like, you know, a solid, solid two, like a high two or a three or better. They just, the big ones seem to bite this time of year. I'm hoping that I can catch a really big one in here. The biggest fish I've caught out of here ever is like, I think like four and a half, maybe five pounds, somewhere in that like four to five pound range. I really want to see if there's some big ones in here. I feel like there is definitely a giant somewhere lurking in this pond because all the fish I've caught in here have been really healthy, really filled out. They've all seemed like, you know, they eat plenty, plenty good. So there's got to be at least one giant lurking around here somewhere. So let's go ahead and get this girl back in, see if we can find an even better one. And gosh, yes, I am so thankful for this fish. All right, darling, let's let you go. There she goes, guys. Right back into the deep blue pond. Oh, <laughs> I just need to talk to you guys for a second because I need a vent here. Wow, like it has been a struggle the last few days and to finally get my hands on that fish, it feels just, it feels great, honestly. <laughs> After, you know, probably the 20 hours of fishing I put in to catch, that is my second fish in, in four days. So, you know, to, to really put in that work and to finally get my hands on a fish feels great. But I just wanna like talk a second to just kind of reflect on a little something I was thinking about earlier today. Since I kind of started YouTube, I've really been put in like out of my comfort zone, I would say, to try to catch fish in places or, you know, in conditions that I normally would not fish um, ever. Just because now that I have an audience and I want to try to get out content for y'all as regularly as I can, I don't want to like, you know, just not fish because the conditions aren't great. So it's really made me a better fisherman over like the last two years where I've been forcing myself to get out and fish more than I normally would. So thank y'all for, for tuning in, watching the channel. Um, it's helped me grow and I'm hoping all the, the helpful tips I've shared with y'all help y'all grow as well. But without further ado, guys, let's uh, let's jump back over here to the rod, grab our, our blade bait and see if we can't find ourselves another one. I swear, man, sometimes I can't stand these GoPros. <laughs> this thing died the split second after I put that fish back in the water. Sometimes they die in the middle of the action and that just drives me crazy. I got lucky this time, but I had to run back to the truck to grab some more batteries. I've been having them charged back here on this cool portable power station that I have. Thank you, Anchor, by the way. They're actually today 
sponsor. So I figured while I'm here, I would take a second to talk about this thing. This is the Anchor 521 portable power station. And this thing is a beast as far as portable power stations go. I've had other ones in the past and this thing blows them out of the water. It's made with a lithium ion phosphate battery. And that thing lasts six times longer than a conventional battery this size. And it also has a bunch of cool ports and things about it that make this thing super useful. You have two traditional ports right there. You have two USB ports. You have a USB-C port. You have a car socket. You have an emergency light just in case you need that for a blackout or something. And then if you flip this thing around to the back, this is how you actually charge this thing. You can either charge it in a traditional wall socket, you can charge it in a car socket, or if you want, you can charge this thing with a solar panel. It supports MPPT. So if you have a MPPT solar panel, you can charge it with that if you're out in like the wilderness or something and need to get a charge on it. But if you're able to charge it at home, it only takes 2.5 hours, which is great. So it charges up really fast and then you have a ton of charging time on it. I think this thing actually has like 24 hours of charging time left on it. If you look at the little display right here, it says 98 and in the bottom right corner, we got 23.2 hours remaining of charge time. And honestly, without this, today's video would have not happened. I forgot to charge all my GoPro batteries and I left them just sitting on my floor and I just had a lot of going on and thankfully I had this thing charged up. So I was able to charge all these batteries while I've been out fishing today, which has been super useful. I'll definitely be using this thing all the time, but thank you once again, Anchor. I really appreciate y'all sending this to me. And if y'all are interested in picking one up yourself, I will leave a link down in the description below where y'all can check it out for yourself. And I'll also pin the link in a comment, but let me go ahead and grab my GoPro batteries right here now that they're all charged up and we will get back to the fish. I think I'm gonna go right back to that same area where I just caught that fish over here. Let's get that thing out there, nice long cast. Keep that rod tip high, keep it out of the leaves and let's keep on cranking. I'm just gonna try to produce as many reaction bites as I can today. I'm sure it's gonna just take some dedication to casting the same areas over and over and over again to get the bites. But, uh, you know, slowly but surely, hopefully we can pick away at these fish. Give this little cove a shot. I feel like it's gonna be too shallow in here. It's super, super shallow. Oh, oh, well, I might be wrong. That might've been a bite there. I'm gonna walk around to this side of the pond really quick, kind of over close to where I caught that fish out, you know, at least where I hooked up with him and try casting across that far side of the pond some. See if that area is a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit less leafy. Come on, fish. Be over here. Let me see if we can find ourselves a nice large mouth on this side of the pond. Oh, there's one right there, <laughs> right at the bank. What? This dude must have been chasing it in. I doubt he was hanging out right there. A small fat one, but good gracious is he fat, man. I mean, he is not the, the longest fish in the world, but he is filled out about as much as you could ask for. And he choked that thing all the way down his little throat right here. Sorry there, bud. I'll get this out for you. Popped it right out of there. And that's how you want them to eat it, guys. <laughs> all the way in the back of their mouth. That means they're they're definitely hungry. This guy's bleeding a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and get him back in the water so he doesn't have any more damage. But thank you for the bite there, little bud. Oh, no, nope. all right, spin around. I think he just went into this leaf pile. Interesting, interesting choice there, bud. Well, heck yeah, I'm glad to see there was a fish over here. Maybe there's some more where that guy came from. This might be the, the productive zone of the pond. Oh, another one right there. <laughs> what? Are they just stacked up here? Right on the edge of this little leaf pile? Fish number three. Well, it seems like they're liking the blade bait. I'm surprised to find these guys up so close to the bank at this time of year, but I'm not complaining. There we go. Got it out, maybe maybe a little bit smaller than that last one, but about the same size. And once again, just super fat and healthy. I'm actually gonna walk over here and release this guy so he can swim out there a little bit easier. I think that guy struggled to get out of that really shallow section. So let's let him go right here and let him swim on back and we'll try to find ourselves a bigger one. Well guys, maybe I need to try some of these little shallow close up areas if these fish are hanging out there. I don't know if they're chasing this thing in or if they're just hanging out right here, but that's two fish right up here against the bank. I'm gonna walk down this way a little bit to try an area that 
last time I fished here was so productive. Like right out here off this, off this like I, just, I wouldn't even call it a point, but where it just kind of starts to bend that way, just straight out in front of here, there was just fish loaded up, like kind of like ten fish out of the same spot. I don't know if this is a popular year-round spot for these fish, but I want to try casting through it a few times, see if we can't trigger a bite. Ooh. Oh, man, that was a bite there. There's one. There's fish. Yeah, that's a little bit better one. Better than those Dinkasauruses. Oh, maybe. Maybe maybe not too much bigger. Feels, I don't know, it's kind of hard telling how big his fish is. It's definitely not as big as that first fish, but I feel like he's a little bit better than the last two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit more meat on the bones, if I do say so myself. I had two bites on that cast. I don't know if it was this guy striking, then chasing it back down and hitting it again, or if I just went through a little productive area and triggered two. But that is a, another solid bass. Probably getting close to the two pounds. He's not that long of a fish, but just thick. These winter fish just are so fat. They're so filled out. They're so healthy, and they fight so good i mean they fight like crazy good that you think they'd be super lethargic and not want to move much but they put up a great fight this time of year there we go got those hooks out of your mouth there bud but i appreciate the nibble we are getting on to to something today fish number four they are loving the blade bait i'm telling you guys i mean that is it's the ticket this time of year especially you pond anglers give it a nice speed crank and you will be in business. There's one. There's a fish. Oh yeah, that one. That one's got a little meat on the bones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one's. That one feels heavier unless she's hooked weird. Um. She's fighting kind of funny. I'm having a hard time telling exactly how big this fish is. I think she's hooked funny. Oh yeah, she's got she's hooked weird. She's got her mouth pried open from this thing. Oh, popped out. But uh, <laughs> she had her mouth pried open, so it just had a lot of drag. It felt like she was heavier than she actually was. But I'm not gonna complain. Fish number five. Once again, uh, you know, same as the rest, another really fat, healthy fish for the size. That is what you want to see out of a healthy population of fish. Just filled out, meaty as can be. Just little footballs. I appreciate the nibble, friend. Get it right on back in there. I decided to walk back over here to this area and give it another shot. I'm going to try to see if the fish have either moved over here or if there was fish here, they're more and you know entice the feed right now sometimes these fish go through like feeding windows and you know you could be fishing the same spot where there's tons of fish they won't bite anything and then all of a sudden all of them want to bite so let me go ahead and give this area a shot again and see if we can't pull up a nice fat large mouth there's one <laughs> oh, I knew there would be a fish out there by that dang fountain. Come in here, bud. Come on in. It was just being stubborn earlier. Threw out there like a million times and he just didn't want to eat earlier. Came back with the same tactic a little bit later. And sure enough, this dude wants to beat, wants to, wants to bite. I don't know what I was trying to say there, but I was trying to say that he wants to bite the dang thing like every freaking bass wants to do in the winter they absolutely crank these blade baits goodness gracious let's get that out of your mouth there friend and try not to drop my rod in the water while i'm at it almost had a casualty there but another solid fish i wouldn't say the smallest one it's definitely not the biggest the first one we caught is definitely leading the pack today but a respectable one let's get them back in later any more where my friend came from? 
Oh, there's another one. <laughs> oh, they're munching. They're munching. I knew this pond was a move today. Oh, gosh. There is just some healthy fish in here, man. They just eat. I don't know if it's just been the last few days or where I've been fishing, but man, <laughs> this pond is delivering for me today. Uh, much needed after a lot of days of nothing. Well, guys, I'm gonna call it on that. It has been a good day. We've been we've been out here. We've been catching fish, and I've had a good time. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. But as always, guys, bassing is a passion. Peace.